hi everyone you're welcome back to my channel my name is nancy if this is your first time here you're also welcome kindly subscribe share and like my videos and also put the notification bell to be notified when i upload new tutorials in today's tutorial i'll be showing you how to make these trendy high-waisted pants the name of this fabric is called a mikado fabric it has a heavier weight compared to the regular satin so i made use of one yard for a plus size person you should make use of one and a half yards I made use of this zipper and I also made use of the hook and bar closure. So this is the hook, why this is the bar. So here I'll be showing you how to take your measurement to achieve this style. The first measurement I'll be taking is my waist measurement, directly on where I want the waistband of the shirt to sit. Here I have 28 inches. The next measurement is my hip circumference. My hip circumference here is 38 inches. The next measurement to take is the tie circumference. I placed my tape under the crotch to take the measurements of my tie circumference. This is 22 inches. So my exact tie circumference is 22 inches. But for the sake of this shirt, which has a wide leg, I would have to add like extra 3 inches to that 23 inches. So my tie circumference will become 25 inches altogether. So do same for your measurement too. Alright, so the next measurement to take is the hip line measurement. I placed the starting of my tape on my waistline and my hip line here is 9.5 inches. This is because it's a high waisted shirt. The next measurement is the crotch depth. So to take the crotch depth, I placed my tape from the waistline vertically downwards to where my crotch is. This is 11.5 inches. And the final measurement I need would be the desired length of my shirt. So the desired length of my shirt is 16 inches. So let's get started. I folded the fabric into two. To know the wideness of the fold, you divide your tie circumference by two and you had about one inch to an allowance to that. The first step is to rule the starting line which also serves as the waistline. And since a band will be attached to the waistline of the shirt, I added half inch sewing allowance below the waistline. The next horizontal line would be the hip line. Since I'll be attaching a waistband of 2 inches to the waistline of the shirt, I placed these 2 inches directly on the second line. The next step is to mark the hip line which is nine and a half inches. Now I went ahead to mark the crotch depth. My crotch depth is 11 and a half inches. The next step is to mark the full length of the shirt. The full length of my shirt is 16 inches. But since I'll be making a turn up on the end of the shirt, I'll be adding extra 3 inches allowance to the length, which will be 19 inches altogether. So this is the waistline, the hip line, the crotch depth line, and the full length of the shirt. Kindly note that we have two that on each pieces of the front piece on the waistline. So on the waistline, I placed my waist circumference divided by four. After which I added one inch allowance to that, which would be for the first dart. And another one inch allowance to that, which would be for the second dart. On the hip line, I placed my hip circumference divided by four. On the crotch depth line, I'll be placing my tie circumference divided by 4. The next step is to connect all three points together. To get the M circumference, I place my tape on the tie circumference and this is 12 and a half inches now i'll take out that half inch from it to place just 12 inches on the m to connect both points 
next step is to place the allowances before cutting so on the waistline i added one inch sewing allowance to the side on the hip line i also added one inch sewing allowance to the side and i added one inch sewing allowance to the tight circumference I added one inch sewing allowance to the M circumference to connect both points together. The next step is to trim out the front piece. Now I went ahead to slit the fold. All right, the next thing I'll do here is to mark the dart. I folded the allowance in and placed my tip from this fold to mark three inches on the waistline and this will be the first dart. For the second dart, I marked five inches on the waistline. I notched the top of both that, so I'll be using that as a guide in securing the dart itself. Alright, so since the fabric was folded into two, we had two pieces for the front piece. The next step is to mark the length of the dart. So I marked 4.5 inches for both the first dart and the second dart. For the first dart, I folded it into two and pinned it by half inch. For the second dart, I also folded it into two to pin the fold by half inch. I took this piece to my sewing machine to secure the dart in form of a triangle by half inch. So making the dart comes in different ways. You can decide to just put the top of the dart instead of doing this triangular shape I did for mine. So it depends on the dart style that is preferable by you. I went ahead to repeat the same sewing process in securing the dart for the second piece. Alright, I've secured the dart. For the front pieces the next step is to fold my fabric into two and place the front piece directly on it as shown making sure i left some allowances on this side of the fold and at the top of the waistline the next step is to mark two inches allowance on this side of the fold for a plus size person you can mark three inches now i made sure that i placed my tape directly on the side of the front piece following the shape to mark 2 inches. After following through this method, you realize that the back piece is wider than the front piece, which is normal. At the top of the crotch line, I added 1.5 inches to connect this point directly to the tip of the waistline. So the back piece is ready. The next step is to trim it out. The next step is to secure the crotch curve of the back piece by half inch following the direction of the chalk. So this is all for the back piece. To curve the waistline on the front piece, I placed both pieces on each other to mark half inch below the waistline from this side. And also marked 2 inches from this edge of the waistline. To connect both points together it is important to do this because this helps in eliminating excess fold from the center waistline of the front piece all right the next step is on how to make the fly zipper this part of the zipper fly is called the fly extension the width of this piece is two inches while the length is seven inches to make a curve at the bottom 
of the fly extension i placed my tape at right angle to mark half inch from this edge and connected it to the bottom of the fly extension in form of a curve kindly take note that the fly extension is a single piece and i used an interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric and i also went ahead to overlock the edges of the fly extension this part of the zipper is called the fly shield this piece was folded into two and I placed an interfacing on the wrong side of the piece and also took it to the overlocking machine to weave the edges. The length of this piece is 7 inches as it is for the fly extension. While the width at the top is 1.5 inches and the width on the bottom is 1 inch. Alright, the next step is to place the fly extension on one side of the front piece, right side to right side, to stitch the edges by half inch. I went ahead to top stitch the fly extension following the direction of my finger. Now I place the tape on the bottom of the fly extension to mark half inch upward. I took the zipper and flipped it to the wrong side of the zipper to place the zipper stop. Directly on this point, I chopped. Now I'll be making a straight stitch on the edges of this other side of the tape. After stitching, I flipped the zipper to the right side. To place the fly shield below this other side of the tape, making sure that the top of the fly shield is equal to the waistline of this front piece. Now I would make a stretch stitch directly on the edges of the tape. So this is the second side of the front piece. I folded the edges of the crotch by half inch and placed it directly on this side of the tip, making sure that the waistline of the two pieces are equal. I went ahead to top stitch directly on the crotch. On getting to the end of the zipper where you have the zipper stop, you should make sure that you stop folding the crotch and just place it as a single piece to stitch directly on it. Now I placed the fly extension directly on the zipper, making sure it covers the zipper properly. The next step is to top stitch the fly extension, making sure it captures the other tape of the zipper below. So I went ahead to trace the zipper extension, but on getting to the end, I marked half inch above the zipper stop. To use this point, I marked in tracing the bottom of the zipper extension. The next step is to make a straight stitch following the direction of the chalk but before doing that make sure you flip the fly shield to this direction so you don't end up stitching on it because if you do the mistake of stitching on the fly shield it simply means that you won't be able to open the zipper.
The next step is to secure the crotch curve by half inch. I folded the front piece of the shirt equally, making sure that the crotch curve is also placed equally. Now I would make a straight stitch from this point, but before doing that, I flipped it to the right side of the fabric to be sure that there is no pleats on the crotch curve. So this is balanced. Now I would make a straight stitch from this point to the end of the crotch curve. Now I went ahead to top stitch the crotch. So this is how easy it is to make a fly zipper. So I'll be running you through how I made the pocket. So this is the piece I used in making the pocket. The width of the pocket is 7 inches. Why? The length of the pocket is 10 inches. Now at the top of the pocket I marked 5 inches. To use a curve driller to connect it to the bottom of the pocket as shown. I stopped tracing the line when I got to the end of the curve. To mark the pocket opening where the hand will be inserted into, I placed my tape from the top of the pocket to mark 7 inches and connected this point to the bottom of the curve as shown. So this vertical side is for the pocket opening. I placed this fabric on my main fabric to cut out extra three pieces, which made it four pieces altogether. Now I placed the pocket on the right side of the front piece to stitch by half inch. Following the direction of the chalk. After that, I also placed the other two pockets on the sides of the back piece to stitch by half inch following the direction of the chalk. All right, after stitching the four pockets, I placed the front piece on the back piece. Here you would notice that the back piece of the shirt is wider than the front piece, which is normal. So all you just have to do is to make sure that you place the sides of the shirt equally. So let's start by securing the side of the shirt. Here I stitched from the top of the waist vertically downward to this point then raise the machine footer to stitch horizontally into the pockets to the pocket edges and then when i got to this point i came out a little by half inch raised my machine footer to secure it vertically downwards to the m since the back piece is wider than the front piece on this side you have to make sure that you place the pocket in such a way that it fits in with the sides of the back piece here equally then you follow through the same sewing process I made for the other side of the shirt. After securing the sides of the shirt, I went ahead to secure the under crotch by half inch, making sure that the crotch line meets each other at the center. So here I flipped the shirt to the right side of the fabric. I took the measurement of the waist circumference. Here it's 14 inches and if I had it to the back waistline, that's 14 inches plus 14 inches all together to be 28 inches which is actually my waist circumference but one thing you should take note is that once the zipper is opened the waist circumference would be larger than when the zipper is closed and this is because of the zipper fly extension so all together now my waist circumference is 30 inches this simply means that the length of the waistband should be 30 inches so these are the belt loops i'll be using i folded it in form of a bias tip and the length is four inches for the waistband unfold the length of this band is two and a half inches after attaching half inch of the band to the waistline of the shorts it becomes two inches why the length of the band is 30 inches plus one inch to an allowance and that is 31 inches altogether I also used an interfacing on the wrong side of the band. I took this to my ironing board to fold the band 
into two equally and went ahead to fold one side of the edges of the band by half inch. The next step is to mark the point you'd like to attach the belt loops to. So I marked the second dart on each side of the front piece. Now I use this point I marked as a guide in marking the point to which I would like to attach the belt loop at the back piece of this shot. I went ahead to make a point on the center back of the back piece. So this simply means that I'll be attaching five loops. To attach the waistband on the waistline of this shot, I extended the waistband half inch outward, making sure that it is placed on the wrong side of the waistline on the shot. Now I'll be stitching this by half inch. On getting to the other end of the zipper, I made sure I extended the waistband outward by half inch before stitching. Now I trimmed out the excess zipper. On this side of the zipper, I folded the band equally to secure the band by half inch. And on this other side of the zipper, I folded the band equally to secure the edge by half inch. Now I folded the waistband equally in such a way that it covers the joining. And for each time I got to the point I chopped in placing the belt loop. I inserted the belt loop in by half inch and stitched directly on it. So while stitching the waistband, I kept inserting the belt loop on the points I chopped initially. Alright, I've properly secured the waistline and the next step is to fold the edge of the loop and place it directly on the top of the waistline to stitch it firmly. And make same stitches on the other belt loops. So this is all for the waistline and the belt loop. The next step is to secure the M of the shirt. So to make the turn up, I folded the M of the shirt by 1.5 inches and took this to the ironing board to secure the fold. After securing the fold, I folded it again by 1.5 inches and took this to the ironing board to secure the fold. I repeated the same folding process for the other leg opening. After folding the end properly, the next step is to make a straight stitch half inch away from the edges of the fold following the direction of the chalk. And I did the same stitching for the other leg opening. Alright, so after stitching the end, this is how it should be. The next thing I did was to flip the fold outward and the turn up is ready looking all beautiful. If you want the width of the turn up to be wider than mine, instead of folding the M by 1.5 inches and further folding it by 1.5 inches, you can fold yours to 2.5 inches and further fold it by 2.5 inches. Alright, so this is the final outcome of my shirt. The last thing I did here was just to tack the hook and bar.
thank you so much for watching to the very end i hope this tutorial was helpful you should give it a try and if you are new to my channel kindly subscribe share and like my tutorials